Hello and welcome back to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, where last time we played through the 50cc Mushroom Cup, and today we we're going to be playing through the Flower Cup on 50cc as well, and we're going to be using Luigi. I'm going to try to go in order with what with, with what characters we use, at least somewhat. And we also unlocked a new wheel in that last episode, so what, what wheel type did we unlock? We unlocked the Triforce Tires. So we're going to be using that with the steel driver and the parachute just because I just went down one for each of the for each of these we'll use the steel driver triforce tires with the parachute here are the stats and once again once again we're going to make sure that smart steering and auto acceleration are indeed disabled and so without further ado let's dive into the flower cup on 50 cc let's do it So, Mario Circuit, I think this is, like, the, the first level, well, I mean, maybe not the first level, I wasn't really, I wasn't really following the, the, the marketing train for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, oh, sorry, not, for Mario Kart 8, I, I, I knew that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was coming out, but when Mario Kart 8 was first being announced and hyped up and marketed and all that, I wasn't really a part of it, I only, I, I only found out about Mario Kart 8's existence through a YouTuber called Thomas J. Asheville, who, for, who, uh, for those of you who've been around my channel for a while, you know that he is probably the biggest inspiration I ever had for starting a YouTube channel in the first place, so... Yeah, I found out about the game through him, and then I, I bought it for myself, and I played it, and I loved it. So, yeah, that was my inspiration. Or, I mean, that, that's how I found out about Mario Kart 8. So, I, I wasn't really around for the marketing campaign, but I'm, I was pr I'm pretty sure that this level is, is the one they showed off as the... Or at least, at least one of the levels they showed off as the part of the, like, hey, look at all of the cool stuff we can do. Which I, I guess makes sense, right? Because, uh, for one, it, this is probably the best demonstration, or at least the most... At least the most... Uh, palpable, maybe not palpable, but the most easily perceptible uh, use of the anti gravity because obviously it's the it's a course that doubles in over itself with the with the with, with the way that you, you go underneath the eight on both sides. Like it's kind of it's kind of like easily understood. It's like hey, this is like you can see the whole track from here. You can see how the anti gravity works because that, that was a big thing for Mario Kart Eight was the the concept of anti gravity, uh, and that was that was the gimmick. Because Mario Kart Seven introduced the introduced the the gliding mark ready introduced the uh anti-gravity and all, who the hell knows what they'll what what new gimmick will be added to mario kart 9 if that ever gets announced which i'm starting to think it might not be but you know never say never i suppose uh but yeah i'm pretty sure this is the one they showed up which would make sense because like i said it's a first of all for purely superficial reasons the course is literally the shape of an eight so it seems to make sense for marketing purposes, but also, like I said, it just seems to, to match the kind of, the overall anti-gravity purpose they're going for. Which, honestly, uh, like, gliding, when that was introduced in Mario Kart 7, which is a game I still haven't played, but I do have a 3DS, so I could, I could potentially one day do a Mario Kart 7 LP, but that, that'd be a blind LP, because I've never actually played that game before. Uh, I could potentially do that. Uh, but I do know that that's the game that introduced the gliding, and that game's gliding is, like, that's, that's integral to the gameplay, so you can, like, you can access higher areas, uh, with the gliding, it, it's, it's a major part of the experience, whereas, anti-gravity, like, it's cool visually to see, like, hey, we're upside down, like, right now, we're upside down, we're seeing the world from a different perspective, and it's cool to see that. However, you don't really think about that while you're playing, whereas, like, with gliding, you think about, okay, I need, I need to glide up here, I need to glide down there, do I take the gliding path or not? Whereas here, you don't, it's not really something I think about for the most part. I mean, it's cool, it's cool from, like, visually speaking all that. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm commu communicating my thoughts well enough here, but, uh, that's my general, general thought process I have, is that, like, it's cool visually, but it's not, not super integral to the gameplay, like, I think they might have wanted it to be. Uh, but I don't know, maybe, I'm, I'm curious here, what you, what are you, what are your thoughts on the, uh, on the anti-gravity mechanics in this game? Because I, uh, I've, I've heard a bit, I've, I've heard different, uh, mixed things about whether people like it or not. Anyway, uh, next race. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I always do that, uh, the, the look back and honk thing, which, um, really, there is no reason, um, why I do it. I, I think it's just kind of like a habit at this point, because I, I always, 
w once I found out that you could you could uh, honk. Well, first of all, I, once I found out there was a horn at all. Uh, also, once I found out that uh, you can use the horn to honk while you're well, before you even have control of your car, uh, and that you can look behind you while you're in control of your car. I'm like, hey, if I look behind me, can I like use the horn on everyone else and see their reactions? And then I could. And once I figured out that I could do that, I kept I just kept doing it every single race. Um, as, as almost almost kind of like a like a tradition. I, maybe that's the wrong word, but it's just it's something I did before every single race, whether I played online or whether I played locally with friends or by myself. I just do it every race. It's kind of a habit at this point. I don't really really think too much about it. It's just kind of it's just kind of like instinct at this point. Like that's 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 my my pre game my pre game ritual is that I, I look behind me and I, I I'm not gonna use the horn now because if I use the horn now I'm gonna waste my super horn. But I, I look behind me and I press I press the L button to use the horn. It's it's a stupid thing. Thanks, Boo. I really appreciated you stealing my item like that. That was very, very kind of you. It's great. It's cool. Thanks. Okay. The uh, yeah. So I guess it wouldn't have mattered if I wasted it or not because Boo was gonna take it anyway. Anyway, so yeah, it's a uh, th that's it, it, it's it's a silly thing to do. It really just it doesn't matter at all. It's kind of it's kind of like because when I was in uh, when I was in uh, an acting program like a drama an after school drama program, which is uh, a place where I made a lot of friends. When I was in elementary school. Um, that, like, that was a, you know, a place I went after school, I would go there, we would do, uh, we would put on plays, basically every year we put on a different place, so we did, uh, we did Seussical, School House Rock Live, Into the Woods, Peter Pan, Putnam County Spelling Bee, Beauty and the Beast, and all that, so, you know, it was very fun for, from, el from second grade to eighth grade, it was, ow, I should have let that go earlier, was, that was my, like, after school activity, um, so I had a lot of fun there, uh, made a lot of friends there, but what we did, something we did before every, every performance was we, we, we did like uh, we we all get in a circle and we we'd all like hold hands in a circle and like uh, shake off our nervousness. I think is what the what the teacher says like this like sh uh, shake off your nervousness. It's, I don't it, it, it's it, like it, it's a dumb thing. It's like, but everyone has their thing that they do um, before anything. It, like just I, I guess kind of a pre-game pre-performance ritual kind of thing. You know everyone has their own thing. It's it's kind of stupid. Makes no sense. But it's a, it's tradition kind of thing. So it's just something that everyone does. Um, but yeah, that that's just. In case, in case anyone was wondering, I haven't, I haven't uploaded the first episode yet, so I don't know if anyone asked about that or if anyone even cares at all. But that that is something that I, I like. If I were watching, I'd be, I might have been like, "Why does he do that? Why does he do that thing with the with with the horn and the looking around? And also, why did he crash into the wall right there like an idiot?" Uh, but like, you know, it's just so I figured I would I would be one jump ahead of the hoofbeat, one hop ahead of the hop, um, and kind of see if I can get a jump on potentially answering any comments I might get about that. And that's another spine shell. Let's see if we can get to the end before that spine shell hits us. I don't think we can. But I'm gonna try. Go, 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 go. We're almost there. Go, 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 go. A little bit more. No, 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 no. Ah, literally right before the finish line. I used the coin. I mm, I should have used the coin earlier. I was at I was at eight coins and I was gonna use the coin to get myself to ten, but then I was I s I hmm. Okay, well that could have gone. I mean we finished first, so it's just whatever, but I wish I I wish I could have finished with ten coins, because obviously I wanna unlock everything, so. I want to try to actually get enough coins to be able to unlock everything per episode. Anyway, next race. You know, I, I just reminded myself of, um, because I, I said one of the plays I put on was Into the Woods, uh, in case you're wondering, I played the part of the baker. Not that that means anything to you if you don't know what the show is, but yeah, it's a, so, I've saying the, the, the name of the play reminded me of a movie called Into the Woods, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but Disney, Big Brain Disney decided that they wanted to make a film adaptation of Into the Woods, which is a, which is a Broadway show, um, or at least it was on Broadway. And it was, it's honestly a really, really awesome show. I, I mean, obviously I might have a little bit of personal attachment to it because I was in the show, so I might have a little bit of personal adoration for it for that, but I, I do think it's a genuinely well-written show um, that kind of plays with the tropes of fairy tales a little bit. Kind of kind of similar to the way Shrek does, but in a bit of a darker scale, I guess. But, so yeah, I, I'm not going to give any more away. I recommend you go watch it for yourself. I think, I, think the, I think you can actually watch the play on YouTube. I'm not sure, though. But yeah, so... Basically, a uh, big fan of Into the Woods, and I like what it does. I like the, what it does with the characters, and I had a lot of fun being in the show when I was when I was a kid. Um, but so you can imagine my um, distaste, I guess, when I saw the Into the Woods movie because 
outside of just being a horrific adaptation of that play, it's just not a good movie. Like, there's nothing, there's, there's, it just, it doesn't feel like there's anything inspired about it. It just feels like lifeless drones waddling around the woods doing random things. They rush, they, the, they butcher the pacing of the show, they cut out crucial plot beats and, and pl crucial character moments. The singing, don't even get me started on the abhorrent auto-tune singing. Um, just, I, there's so much wrong with that movie on every level that I hate it with a fire passion. And I'm not going to spend all day ranting about it because I don't want to rant about that terrible movie. I've only seen it once and I don't ever want to see it again. Uh, but just take my advice, don't watch it, ever. If you want to watch Into the Woods, watch the play. Don't watch the show. Don't do it. It's bad. Um, so I, I said show. I'm that's staying around the three for you. Don't watch the movie. It's bad. Don't do it. It's, it's really, really bad. But yeah, I, I just thought of that when I was thinking of Into the Woods, and I don't, I wish I didn't think about that. If you want, but I guess we can talk about Twisted Mansion, which, uh, big I really like this stage. This stage is really, really, how many shells have we been hit with so far in this Really just in this episode alone, but also just throughout the LP is in first thought just the first two episodes really we've been hit with like a thousand spiny shells. But yeah, this this I mean uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of because this this is one where um, I guess like right right now I don't really feel the anti gravity, but when, when I'm when you're in the, the mansion itself you can kind of like you see the undulating uh, floor patterns in the carpet, th then you do kind of feel the anti gravity. So I guess it kind of goes against what I was saying earlier. But like I said, I, I think I actually did say in the first course there are some instances where you can kind of feel the anti-gravity a bit better, but by and large, I, I don't think that's the case. But yeah, big fan was to mention. I think it's a very, very unique and well, well-dressed stage in terms, of, in terms of its atmosphere. And, and it always reminds me of the Haunted Mansion, uh, which I guess I can talk about a little bit more in the next, uh, in, in the next course. So, uh, next race. The reason why I brought up Haunted Mansion is because uh, a couple years ago, I think it was 20, summer of 2018, my cousins came down to visit for, uh, just, just for their summer vacation, and they wanted to go to Disney, so I helped them, I helped them book and plan a Disney trip, because they'd never been before, and I wanted to, I wanted them, because I, I, I have massive adoration for the Disney World Parks, uh, I, they, I, I went there when I was a kid, and I, I really, really adore everything about those parks, so I wanted them, I, I wanted to show them the best that they could of, uh, I wanted to show them the best of the best of the parks that to offer. I wanted to give them a nice, solid touring plan and just to make sure they had the best time they can. And I've I've heard that they still talk about the trip to this day. Like they tell they tell the friends, basically tell anyone they meet about the Disney trip they had. So it's very, very uh, nice to hear. Like it makes me happy to hear that they had such a great time on the trip. But the reason why I bring it up is because they uh, one of the places that they uh, that they wanted to go was the Haunted Mansion. Uh, well, actually, well, I guess no, not that they didn't want to, not that they want to go, it's the place, one of the places I told them, you have to go here, because it's awesome, and they didn't, they didn't think it'd be all that scary, uh, because it's, you know, it's a, it's a thing in Magic Kingdom for kids, which, like, to be clear, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna jump out of your seat with fear like you would if you were at, like, I don't know, uh, Hollow Scream at Busch Gardens or Halloween Horror Nights in Universal, but, it, you know, it's, it, it, it does, it does have a really, really chillingly haunting atmosphere, so it's got that going for it, uh, but it just—it's a place I didn't think would be all that scary. And then they got the stretching room, and then I could see that a couple of them were on edge. So it's a—it's just, it's just something that comes to mind. I never think of that, but I guess it's also—I guess because I guess, cause I guess um, the, the the idea of just you know wanting wanting to show them the best the parks had to offer is kind of something that for forget forgot forty five did for me as well because she took me to Universal uh, in December of twenty eighteen for the first time. We did Universal uh, and Islands of Adventure in one day. Or at least the most that we could do, because even with the Express Pass, which she got for us, we, uh, we still... <laughs> do you want to know what day we went? We went December 22nd, which is three days before Christmas, so, uh... Yeah, that was a great idea, right? No, it wasn't. The, the entrance to the park was jam-packed like a... I, I honestly, I guess kind of like a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade kind of thing, where, like, you basically were not getting into the park, so we had to take a... We had to take the secret back entrance by Rip, Rip Ride Rocket to the left side of the park, which she knew about, because... She's awesome. So, you know, we, we got in, and we wrote a lot of cool stuff, but we just didn't, we, we didn't get to do as much as we would have gotten to do otherwise uh, had we not gone at one of the worst times of year to go. But we're going, but she still, she still wanted to show me the best the park I had to offer, um, and she's taking me back, she's taking me back again in August, uh, which is next month, to kind of mop up all the things we didn't get to do the first time around. So, you know, it just, I, I, I can understand the, the, the that, that desire to, like, want to show want someone you, that you care about, be it a family member or a friend or someone you, some, someone you love dearly, just wanting them to, to 
see the best of the of what you what you love. And like for instance, uh, uh forget forget Forty Five and I are going to be playing through Comet Evolved next month sometime, uh, which is the first Halo game for the first time. And I I really wanted her. I'm hoping she comes away from that enjoying Halo. Because um, in case you don't know, a little little fun fact about me is that Halo is very very intrinsically linked to my heart. It's very very close to my heart in every discernible way. So I'm hoping that she comes away loving it. Uh, so you know, it just it's just, just kind of that. I guess I'm just kind of talking about the desire to want to show the best of something you love to the people you care about in your life. And it looks like they came away from Disney enjoying it very much. So I'm happy to hear that. And I guess that just that is just talking about the haunted mansion kind of reminded me of that. Anyway, let's go view the results. You've collected 60 coins. A new vehicle customization option has been unlocked. All right, so we'll be sure to show it off in the next episode. But for now, that is going to do it for this video. So, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. I hope to catch you all tomorrow for some more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Goodbye.